What's up, mind speakers? Welcome to another episode of Think Tank, where I talk about whatever comes to my mind because that's just how my fucking brain works. Ready, let's go. So on Twitter, probably the number one thing I'm tired of is seeing pictures and videos of clearly gay kids being uploaded with the caption, what would you do if this was your son? And usually it's a kid who's putting on makeup or who's wearing a dress or something. Here's the thing. These kids aren't doing shit to you besides being out here, being themselves and expressing themselves however they want to express themselves and clearly they're happy. And a lot of times these kids can't do that walking around because they will be ostracized, so sometimes they take to the internet and post those things to communities who do accept them. And you guys go and take them and you guys like to say, what would you do if this was your son? Which then leads somebody to say, ask him if he wants lunch, or oh shit, my kid's going to hell. And I just don't feel like these kids should be offered up for discussion positively or negatively. Leave them the fuck alone, let them be children. But all I want to say is most of you niggas is you guys need to stop worrying about what you would do if that was your kid because you're so masculine and where's your dad? He never wanted to give a fuck about you anyway, so masculine or feminine, your dad still didn't give a shit. Leave these children alone. They probably have fathers. Speaking of pictures of alternative clothing, there's this picture of Lil Uzi going around where he's wearing an off-the-shoulder blouse and everyone saying he looks like a germ or like they're trying to say that hip-hop is dead, like this is not the hip-hop I grew up in. Hip-hop used to be like baggy tees or whatever. All right, all right, all right. I know I don't like Lil Uzi. I said it before, I don't like Lil Uzi, but honestly, the kid has done nothing to deserve hate for his own style choices. I personally wouldn't wear the off-the-shoulder blouse, right? Not my thing. I wouldn't get those freaking weird piercings right here, right? Not my thing. But if this kid wants to wear whatever the fuck he wants to wear, he says he's a rock star, he identifies with that side of things, they tend to mix and match clothing and blur the gender line. It's always been that way. But I will also say one thing. Someone who did do that was Prince. Now, I'm not saying that Lil Uzi is at all Prince, so stop typing fast, because I don't believe that, because I don't like his music. But artists tend to have weird ways of expressing themselves sometimes in their style choices. Just let the kid be the kid. Like, not everything has to turn into, oh, I can't listen to this because he wore a blouse. This nigga's gay. Newsflash, all of pop culture is gay. You just don't know it. Speaking of style choices, male rompers are now a thing? I got on Twitter and there was this huge romper debate going on. There were tons of hilarious tweets. I retweeted a ton of them. If you want to see them, go to my Twitter, 20 Days of June. I will link it down below. And it was all about the fact that these new rompers are a thing and rompers are traditionally a woman's style of clothing. It's like a shirt and a shorts all in one kind of thing. And people were saying rompers are masculine, rompers are feminine. Uh, you're gay if you wear a romper. You're straight if you don't wear rompers. Whatever. Of course, I don't believe you're gay if you wear a romper because you know what makes you gay? Falling in love with another man, putting a dick in your mouth, things like that, that's real gay. But wearing a romper, eh. Second of all, some of the rompers are kinda tough. And third of all, every romper that I've seen that was ever in a store is now sold out. So y'all gonna see some niggas in some rompers. The two things I find inconvenient about rompers are, one, do they have pockets? Because I don't see them. And two, you have to take the whole shit off to piss. And you got me fucked up. I have the bladder of a squirrel, right? I have to pee probably every 30 to 45 minutes because I'm also thirsty and I drink a lot of water. What do I look like getting butt ass every time I have to piss? That is so fucking stupid and inconvenient. And there's not enough stalls in a man's bathroom to do that. So what's gonna happen besides we have a bunch of butt ass naked niggas running around the bathroom trying to use the urinals? I don't want that either. It's just an inconvenient style choice to me personally, but I didn't see some fire rompers. So if I see you out on the street and your rompers lit, you ain't gonna get shit but compliments from me, but I hope you ain't gotta piss. So the BET Awards nominations dropped. I don't really care about any of them specifically besides the Best Female Hip Hop Award because there's a story around it right now. Nicki Minaj has won six times in a row. She's nominated. Remy Ma is nominated. Missy Elliott is nominated. Cardi B is nominated. And Young M.A. is nominated. Now, here's the thing. Nicki Minaj hasn't really come with that heat lately. A and B, Stephen Hill is fired. And that was a big connection as to how Nicki could always solidify the fact that she was going to win because she had a great fucking relationship with Stephen Hill. Remy Ma is still talking about Nicki Minaj. Young M.A. just released an EP, but ain't nobody done said shit about it. I don't know how the fuck Missy Elliott got there. And Cardi B raps like a New York meme. So that's where we are. May the best woman win. But Dreezy. My girl Dreezy from Chicago, who released an album last year called No Hard Feelings, feels snubbed because she knows she should have been in that category. Now, I totally agree. Because when she spoke up, I said, wait a fucking second. Why is Missy Elliott there? But my girl Dreezy ain't getting a shot. And she spoke up. She said, I'm the only woman to drop an album last year, tour with all the niggas, all my videos were hits, and have a platinum single. Like, what the fuck is going on? But I'm a charger to the game. She spoke up and she said it on Twitter. But then I realized the song that went platinum is Body. And I love Body with Jeremiah. The song is awesome. But... She's singing on the song because she sings and she raps. And if people haven't listened to the rest of Dreezy's music, they may not fucking know she's a rapper. But she has tons of other songs on her album where she is giving you verses. Like on Bad Bitch where she says, feeling like I'm Kobe, I ain't giving niggas passes. Like she does have bars, but her biggest single, she's not rapping. But all that I think that Dreezy needs to do is make sure that the songs when she is rapping get 
more play because Dreezy's got talent. So I've been seeing on Instagram a whole lot of shit. Why do women cheat? Why do men cheat? You know, it's a big thing. Like everybody wants to know, like what's the key to someone who cheats? Why do people do it? And I can break it down to a whole bunch of different things. Like, oh, men cheat just physically and women cheat emotionally and blah, blah, blah. That's all fine and dandy, but it comes down to one point. People cheat because they're disloyal. When you get into a relationship, you commit yourself to one person. You say, I pledge myself to you and only you. And when you make a decision to step outside of that, the only reason why you're doing it and not telling your significant other, oh, hey, I don't want to be in this anymore or just moving on is because you're disloyal. That's what it's all about. The other person is owed at least that from you. Just the honesty to say, hey, I respect you enough not to fuck around on you, but to just get out of this situation. That's all the other party wants. But people want to have their cake and eat it too because they're disloyal and they don't respect their significant other. And that's why people cheat. Amber Rose was hosting at Orin Night Club last week in which she had a note that she sent to, I guess, the party promoter or the DJ or somebody that she said that she doesn't want any music by any of her exes to be played that night that she just wanted the night to be about her now two things one that is queen petty because that's something i would do i don't want to hear that shit when i'm there play that shit some other time thank you right but two i think that just solidifies that amber rose didn't fuck drake because there's certain songs that people are coming out to hear and 99 percent of the time they do involve drake so if you don't want any music by anybody that you don't fuck in the hip-hop community and you're at a black nightclub you might want to stop fucking rappers because we can get through a club night now without kanye right that's fine but if kanye had something hot you're fucked whiz you can get through a club night without some whiz easily and those are just the two that are confirmed i ain't going through the whole rumors list because that ain't none of my business but all i'm saying is amber go and get the money go and get the money but it ain't that serious if kanye drops a hit and you gotta get your money and it's not like blame game like it's not directly about you if it's so long ago just let it go i also saw that there is a two thousand dollar chanel boomerang that is going around that people are paying two thousand dollars for a fucking First of all, I played a lot of yard games as a kid. I've never had a boomerang that you throw and it really comes back to you. I feel like that's just a big myth. Two, if I pay $2,000 for that boomerang and I throw it, that shit better bring back Aaliyah. And I'm not fucking joking. That shit better bring back Little Kim's La Bella Mafia face. That shit better bring me so much fortune back from around the world when I throw that shit for $2,000. 2,000 black coins? Like, for you niggas to stunt on Snapchat? Fuck out of here. There's a new Snapchat feature apparently now that you can post your Snapchat but you can set that specific snap on your story to loop, which means that the other person has to tap to get to the next portion of your story. Here's the thing, I'm gonna be honest, I don't watch many people's stories anyway because I don't give a fuck about your life. There are some people's stories who I do want to watch, and I'm watching it because I think it's gonna be like a consecutive story, but the specific snap will start again, I won't know what's happening until I'm halfway through it, and I have to be like, why the fuck is everything on loop? Like, stop doing that shit. If you do put your Snapchat story on loop, if you put each specific segment of your story on loop, I am unfollowing you. And Snapchat, stop adding pointless optional shit to every fucking update. At some point, your app is just good, but you ruin it when you add pointless shit to it. Get stop. Russell Wilson got some heat for posting a Mother's Day message to Ciara and referencing Little Future and their new baby as our kids because I guess Future fans are mad when Russell calls Little Future his son. That is his son. They're married. That's his stepdad. That's his son. That's how parenting works. Little Future has two daddies, one biological and a stepfather that loves him and loves his mom and loves his sister. Let him live. Let him have two daddies. I know you're upset. You didn't have one, but he has two and it's great and he doesn't need to prove that to you. He loves Russell. He loves Future. He loves Ciara. There's nothing but love in that baby's heart. You're mad. He's not. Let it the fuck go. Now we're gonna move it on to put you on. As usual, if you have any songs that you want to put me on, you can find me on all social media, Twitter, Tumblr, Facebook, Snapchat, as 20 Days of June. Let me know what you're listening to, and I'll definitely give it a listen, and it could be featured in next week's video. As we mentioned before, I'm gonna put you on some Dreezy, because I feel like the right Dreezy isn't getting out to the streets, and this album is a year old, and I kind of feel like it got snubbed now, so now I'm in my feelings, because I fucking loved it. So we're gonna put you on two songs from Dreezy. We're gonna put you on Close to You with T-Pain, which is a smooth R&B record. Great record. It shows the versatility in Dreezy. It shows just how effortlessly Dreezy can switch up between the worlds of hip-hop and R&B and be authentic in both. And that's a great record. And we're also going to put you on Afford My Love featuring Wale, which is also a great record. It blends the worlds of hip-hop and R&B into a smooth hip-hop track. She has records where she goes hard on it, but I like the records that have a little bit of a story to it. So I'm going to put you on Afford My Love as well. I'll leave the links to both of these songs in the description box below. Sound off in the comments and let me know how you feel about either one of these songs or if you have another Dreezy song or any other song that you like whatever you're listening to i want to know what you guys are listening to because this week i had trouble finding to put you on because i really wasn't looking for new music i was just reaching back into my old bag so please let me know what you guys are listening to i need some new shit and i know you guys got the heat and that's it for today's think tank as usual if you like this video don't forget to like and subscribe but if not suck a dick and i'll be seeing you guys later deuce
What the fuck I don't want to be a part of is Miley Cyrus twerking on Robin Thicke like a fucking ass clown and going tits out for Terry Richardson and thinking that hip-hop is cute as long as she can use it as a gimmick when she's swallowing a load full of Mike Wills made it.